I would like to welcome our esteemed panelists. Today, we have Ms. Rupal Khandelwal from BSC, who comes with over 17 years of experience from diverse experience ranges like investment banking and stock exchange. Presently, she is spearheading the listing functions with BSC and is liaisoning officer on behalf of BSC with SEBI. Our second panelist, which you all have known, is Mr. Harit Obroy from India Bonds, who has over 20 years of experience in the financial services, specifically in the investment advisory services on the equity as well as debt products. So very good, very good evening to both of you. Thank you so much for giving us time and thank you for uh, helping with us with this webinar. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sunny. So the topic is listed and the unlisted securities. How do we understand the difference? So first, we understand the definition of what is a listed security. It's very simple, very easy. As the name suggests, listed is that this debt security, this bond, this debenture has been listed in a recognized stock exchange. That means in NSC or BSC or in both exchanges, this bond is listed. Okay? When it is listed, it is regulated under the SEBI regulations. Yaniki SEBI becomes a regulatory body for a listed debt security. When you are talking about an unlisted debt security, as the name suggests, is, is security ka listing nahi hua hai, kisi bhi stock exchange mein, koi regulated stock exchange mein is ka listing nahi hua hai. However, is may trading fair be possible hai, or transfer of security is still possible. You can buy and sell the securities, but this transfer of purchase or purchase or sale of the securities is called as over the counter market otc market mein hota hai aap phone mein ya apne broker se ya apne authorized uh, advisor se baat karke ye bond kharidte ya bechte hain aur wo pricing aapko batata hai kya sahi hai kya galat hai or whatever the best price available in the market these securities are also known as otc securities over the counter securities so the basic definition samajh mein aa gaya listing hai yani ki exchange mein listed hai aur Unlisted security, which are not listed onto the exchange. In listed securities, regulator SEBI becomes a regulator to regulate these securities. And in unlisted securities, there is no such regulator. SEBI doesn't form a part of this regulation. And OTC securities, these are known as OTC securities or over-the-counter securities where the trade happens. These are listed. Listed securities are listed on recognized stock exchange like BSC and NSC. Unlisted securities are not listed. And when you, uh, when the issuer wants to do a listed security, they have to mandatory take prior approvals from the designated stock exchange before issuance of the debt securities. Whereas in unlisted uh, debt securities, there's no such requirement to go to the stock exchange. Liquids, uh, listed securities can trade over the exchange and through the OTC market, but unlisted securities have to mandatory trade through the OTC market only. So when the mode of issuance is a private placement of bonds, the face value has to be 10 lakhs. Uh, whereas when the mode of issuance is a public issue, the face value of the bond has to be 10, 1,000 rupees. Whereas the minimum investment requirement for the primary application is 10,000 rupees. So you have to subscribe minimum 10 units of a bond. However, there is no such guidelines on the unlisted space. There is a market practice where the face value can be 10,000 rupees, 1 lakh rupees. So it depends upon the issuer, how he wants to participate, and what is the kind of audience they are targeting for when it comes to unlisted securities. Applicability of EBP. EBP stands for Electronic Bidding Platform. So exchanges have designed a platform which allows uh, issuers to list, to issue these securities through the EBP platform. Now, if the issuer in the in a year has a cumulative requirement to raise more than 100 crores, they have to go via the EBP platform of the exchanges. Isme advantages kya hota hai? The, the biggest advantage is the wider audience can participate because you exchange mein aake apne security define kar rahe or multiple category of investors can participate into this kind of a security. Multiple ish, investors can participate and it is more of a transparent mechanism for a price discovery. It also improves the efficiency and reduces the cost from the investors from the issuer's perspective when issuing a security. However, the same is not applicable when it comes to unlisted debt securities. 
अच्छा सिंस लिस्टिंग इज अ स्पेसिफिक क्राइटेरिया रिक्वायरमेंट सेबी इज रेगुलेटिंग इट तो फ्रॉम द इन्वेस्टर्स पर्सपेक्टिव सेबी हैज क्रिएटेड सम रेगुलेशंस एंड गाइडलाइंस व्हिच द इश्यूअर हैज टू फॉलो जिसमें एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट गाइडलाइन है पेनल्टी क्लॉसेस हैं अगर आपने लिस्टिंग लिस्टेड सिक्योरिटी इशू कर रहे हैं एंड इफ यू हैव नॉट बीन एबल टू लिस्ट द सिक्योरिटी विद इन द 4 डेज ऑफ अलॉटमेंट देयर इज एन 1% एडिशनल इंटरेस्ट पेनल्टी व्हिच इज लिवाइड to the issuer and it is given in the hands of the investor same is the case if there is a delay in the security creation of a secured bond hai usme agar security creation mein delay aaya so there is a 2% additional penalty to the issuer whereas these guidelines or these regulations are not applicable if you are an unlisted set security acha ek investors ke perspective se sabse important point ho jata hai ki taxation ka so we are not tax advisors or tax consultant you can consult your tax advisor for further details or for uh, detailed information but a broader guidelines mein aapko thoda sa bata deta hu when it comes to listed debt securities there is no tds on interest income whereas in an unlisted debt securities a tds at 10% is applicable as under the section 193 of it act so if you are earning interest income in a listed debt securities there is no tds applicable where is an unlisted security tds is applicable ठीक है इंटरेस्ट इनकम इज ऑलवेज टैक्सेबल इन द हैंड्स ऑफ एन इन्वेस्टर एंड इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन व्हाट इज योर मार्जिनल रेट ऑफ टैक्सेशन सो इट इज टैक्स एज मार्जिनल रेट ऑफ टैक्सेशन सो बॉन्ड में दो तरीके के इनकम होती है एक आपकी इंटरेस्ट रेट इनकम होती है और एक आपकी कैपिटल गेन होती है इफ यू परचेस अ बॉन्ड एंड द प्राइस ऑफ द बॉन्ड इज एप्रिशिएटेड यू एंड यू आर डूइंग अ ट्रांजैक्शन इन द सेकेंडरी मार्केट यू यू कैन हैव कैपिटल गेन्स एज वेल so capital gains define hote hain short term and long term in a listed debt security in a listed bond short term capital gain the definition of a short term is 12 months or 365 days if anything lower than 12 months and if you are selling the security and if you, there is any capital gain to it the tax is as per your marginal rate of taxation whereas the same short term ka definition in an unlisted security is 36 months so you if you have to enjoy if if the uh, short term may if you look into definition from the unlisted perspective you have to hold this security for 36 months to move to a long term capital gain taxation for the lower taxation slab jaane ke liye whereas in a listed debt security is only one year and more than one year it is categorized in a listed securities as long term capital gain tax where the taxation rate is only 10% without indexation uh last but not the least ek bahut bada format of, of difference between listed and unlisted uh, securities mein hota hai wo hota hai disclosures to exchange uh, disclosures like financial disclosures corporate governance reports and your certificates uh, in any format intimations of interest payments intimations of redemption details these are the disclosures which the issuer has to mandatorily made in regular frequencies as prescribed by the uh, regulator uh, or the cb in their regulatory guidelines of lodr so listing obligation and disclosure requirements where these disclosures has to be made to the exchanges in unlisted this is not applicable because cb is not regulating this instrument so mai isko ek common frame mein agar i felt try to understand this ki if i am a parent and my uh, son or a daughter is in 10th standard uh, मैं चाहूंगा कि मैं मेरा बेटा या बेटी मल्टीपल टाइम्स ड्यूरिंग द ईयर एग्जाम दे बिफोर गोइंग टू द बोर्ड फाइनल एग्जामिनेशन सो दैट आई नो व्हाट इज द प्रोग्रेस चार्ट माय माय किड इज डूइंग कि उसका पहले यूनिट टेस्ट में क्या परफॉर्मेंस है उसका हाफ ईयरली में क्या परफॉर्मेंस आ रहा है टेस्ट में उसका प्रिलिमिनरी में क्या परफॉर्मेंस आ रहा है सो इफ इफ देर इज एनी करेक्टिव एक्शन इज रिक्वायर्ड अगर उसको कुछ मैथ्स की ट्यूशन चाहिए तो मैं उसमें मैथ्स की ट्यूशन लगाऊंगा अगर उसको कुछ इंग्लिश के लिए हेल्प चाहिए तो मैं वो ट्यूशन लगाऊंगा दो हजार करेक्टिव एक्शन विच एन पेरेंट एज अ पेरेंट आई कैन टेक बट अगर मुझे मेरा बेटा सिर्फ एक ओपन या करस्पॉन्डेंस कोर्स के एग्जाम में जा रहा है जहां सिर्फ और सिर्फ उसको फाइनल ईयर का एग्जाम देना है तो मुझे साल भर सिर्फ इसी बात पे वेट करते रहना की मैं आई एम प्रिज्यूमिंग दैट ही स्टडिंग वेल वो अच्छे से पढ़ाई कर रहा है और रिजल्ट देगा और पास हो जाएगा एंड आई माइट receive a shock at the end of the when the results come in whereas agar wo regular school mein jaake pad raha hai aur usko uske regular updates aa rahe hain mereko pata chal raha hai so i am far more 
केपेबल टू टेक एनी काइंड ऑफ करेक्टिव एक्शन इफ रिक्वायर्ड तो इसको मैं सिंपल फॉर्मेट में से करता हूँ बट ये डिस्कलोजर्स टू दी एक्सचेंज एज अ रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट इन लिस्टेड डेट सिक्योरिटीज इज एप्लीकेबल विच इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल इन अनलिस्टेड डेट सिक्योरिटीज इफ यू कैन जस्ट क्विकली एक्सप्लेन अराउंड दैट के प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट और पब्लिक इशू के बीच में डिफरेंस क्या है काफी लोगों ने क्यूएनए में भी ये पूछा है सो आगे की स्लाइड जाने से पहले मैंने सोचा है कि ये आप एक्सप्लेन कर दे प्लीज सो सो व्हेन व्हेन अ इश्यूअर और अ बोरोअर वांट्स टू रेज मनी थ्रू द डेट सिक्योरिटीज और थ्रू बॉन्ड्स उनके पास दो ऑप्शन होते हैं दो मोड होते हैं या तो वो प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट्स के थ्रू जाए वेयर देयर इज अ लिमिटेड सेट ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स हु कैन पार्टिसिपेट इन दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट और दे कैन गो टू अ मास मार्केट लेवल जहां एक वाइडर ऑडियंस के पास जाए और वहां से पैसा रेस करें ठीक है इफ इफ से आई एम आई इश्योर आई नीड टू रेस हंड्रेड क्रोज ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आई एम अ लार्ज कैटेगरी इन्वेस्टर फॉर एन एग्जांपल से सपोज मैं कोई टाटा की एंटिटी हूँ बड़ा एंटिटी हूँ एंड आई नो मुझे हंड्रेड क्रोज रिक्वायरमेंट है एंड फॉर फॉर एन इश्योर आई नो दैट देर आर ट्वेंटी फाइव थर्टी फिफ्टी ऑट इन्वेस्टर्स हुआ रेडी विद डेट अमाउंट ऑफ मनी प्रोबेबली आई वुड नॉट लाइक टू गो आउट इन द पब्लिक फॉर्मेट और अ पब्लिक डोमेन टू रेज दैट अमाउंट ऑफ मनी Whereas, if say I want to raise a thousand crores, I'm still Tata, but I need my requirement is thousand crores, and I might not be able to raise this much amount of money from a limited set of investors. So I would like to participate in the larger audience uh, environment. जहाँ मैं चाहता हूँ कि हर जगह से मेरे को जितना market wider audience participate कर सके, individual investors participate कर सके, retail category participate कर सके, uh, various other categories of investors who are only allowed to participate. in their investment guidelines they are written that they can participate in public issue format wo sab participate kar sakte to wo jaate hain public issue format mein ab public issue ka document format yahi hota hai jaise hum equity mein ipo karte hain so one is private equity hota hai limited set of investors limited information available to the market and there are few investors who participate who are informed investors who are connected investors they can participate in public issue format a wider audience can participate and they have a better uh, disclosures and better guidelines within which they can participate now in both the cases if the security is listed uh, security sebi becomes a regulator so sebi has given some guidelines within which private placements and public issues can come into existence now private placements as i said because limited set of customers hai they might not have the entire so retail investor might not have the access to the information from the Uh, from the issuer perspective, so उन्होंने रखा कि face value थोड़ा ज़्यादा होना चाहिए, ten lakh rupee face value होना चाहिए, so that informed investor is coming up. Whereas retail आता है जब participate करने के लिए less than मतलब ten thousand rupees, fifty thousand rupees, one lakh rupees ticket size, they want far more disclosures and guidelines to be in place uh, from for that retail investor and individual investors can have a better disclosure, better better information in their hands. Whenever is required, so वो public issue format में थोड़े disclosures ज़्यादा बढ़ जाते हैं और face value कम हो जाता है, so that multiple category of investors can participate. One more query that people have asked around this is कि you discuss something about EBP, uh, electronic bidding platform. So can you re-explain what is electronic bidding platform? कि how does it help in private placements? Yeah. So uh, what happens from the issuer's perspective? Issuer को अगर कोई instrument बाहर दिखाना है ज्यादा पैसा मिल जाए या रिक्वायर्ड अमाउंट ऑफ मनी मिल जाए Where I have less of paperwork, so exchanges have provided this platform, an electronic bidding platform, where they can participate, they can open their issue. So, is me kya hota? The issue has been uploaded onto the exchange, and the investors can invest via. It's a primary format of application where investors can apply directly to the issue, and the subscription can take place. The most important part is is me price discovery and transparency built up hoti hai. Or from the issuer's perspective, cost efficiency built up हो जाती है because you do less of paperwork and more and and faster turnaround of execution of the issue. I think one thing that I would like to add to what Harit is saying, EBP is one of its kind. It's probably not available in any of the developed countries. Also, India is pioneer uh, who came up with EBP thanks to the exchanges, thanks to the regulator. Uh, special thanks to both of them. 
and it really helps bring in more transparency at what pricing uh, a issuer or a borrower raises money. Uh, it's just like a uh, bidding hota hai, a product ke liye, usi tarike se bond ke liye bidding hota hai, uska price discovery mechanism ekdam transparently hota hai and it's a revolutionary uh, initiative that has been taken by the exchanges, by BSC, by SEBI, by NSE, all of them and uh, it's really commendable it's not there in probably any of the developed uh, in any of the developing nations and i really have my doubts if they're even there in the developed nations it's one of its kind in the world so we are actually pioneering in this in in listed debt securities tds is not deducted whereas in unlisted debt securities any unlisted bonds may 10 percent tds is applicable under section 193 of income tax act so TDS is applicable at the rate of 10% when the bond is unlisted. So whenever you're buying an unlisted bond, whatever the interest income is, when you have interest, you have 10% TDS cut. So if you are buying a bond, say 10% coupon rate, if you have interest, if you have 1000 rupees, you have 10% TDS cut. However, if you will issue you a TDS certificate. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. So particularly when a company wants to get its bonds listed on an exchange, it is important that the regulation hai, that is NCS regulation wo follow. There are many disclosures that the company should tell you, like what is the company, what is the business, what is the company, what is the company, what is the debt raised, what is the capital. Hai. क्या उसका मैनेजमेंट है क्या उसके रिस्क फैक्टर्स हैं जो कम जो एक इन्वेस्टर को जानने चाहिए ऑल दीस थिंग्स आर देयर एज एन ऑफर डॉक्यूमेंट देयर आर फाइनेंशियल डिटेल्स व्हिच आर अवेलेबल यू नो फॉर इन्वेस्टर्स टू लुक एट देखिए आप उसका कि क्या फाइनेंशियल है क्या फाइनेंशियल हेल्थ है उस कंपनी का बिफोर यू नो समबडी पुट्स इन मनी इनटू द कंपनी also, uh, SEBI, ne, uh, you know, as far as private invest, private uh, bond, uh, private, uh, you know, placement of bonds is concerned or a public, there are differentiating factors. Uh, public bonds may, of course, zada disclosure chahiye hota hai. Public, pri private placement, because it is limited to limited set of investors, is liye thoda sa kam, in, uh, you know, uh, disclosures chahiye hota hai. Lekin, uh, as far as basic disclosures are concerned, wo sabhi almost same hai, basics mein. So, uh, important ye hai ki wo offer document investors ko padna chahiye and take an investment decision only after reading this. As far as a public issue of bond is concerned, you have to have a merchant banker in place Merchant banker is entity that does due diligence and tells that yes, retail ke liye wo ek, ek another level of exercise karta hai to, you know, because these uh, public issue bonds are available to the retail investors, they exercise a kind of due diligence in place that yes, uh, you know, we have made adequate disclosures which are required for a retail investor to come in. Accordingly, uh, I think uh, SEBI ne ek bahut justified stand liya hai that, you know, before anyone comes into, you know, a listing space, it is important ki wo stock exchange se pehle hi ek in principle approval leke jaye, offer document dikhaye, you know, whether the disclosures are as per NCS or no. Stock exchanges dekhte hai that, you know, uh, the relevant disclosures jo SEBI ne prescribe kare hai, whether they are meeting it out. Stock exchange also happens, you know, to be a guiding factor. We guide the company, we guide the, you know, issuers that yes, these kinds of disclosures are required, you know, to uh, get your uh, bonds listed on this exchange. Uh, well, kisi bhi company ka jo health hai, you know, I think financials play a very, very important part. Uh, so Sebi has said that nothing doing, aapke jo bhi financials hai, they should be, they should not be older than six months. That means within six months, you know, as far as your financials are concerned, six months is more than your financials are not going to be able to get an idea that yes, this is the way my, uh, you know, uh, this is the way the company I'm going to invest in. This is the health of the company. So take an informed decision. Now, uh, SEBI has come up with one more initiative, which is the recovery expense fund, which is created, you know, where a company, you know, goes into a, problematic situation to recover the you know legal expenses and all the company maintains that kind of fund with the you know exchange 
uh, whenever company you know uh, gets listed we enter into a listing agreement whereby the company says that yes there are certain norms which are you know prescribed by sebi after my listing uh, i have to disclose these basic details on an ongoing manner to the stock exchange for my investors to look at that yes this is the way the company is growing or this is the way the company is performing so this is a binding agreement between the exchange and the uh, issuer that exchange will provide a platform for them to disseminate this information credit rating compulsory or required for unlisted bonds as they are seeing a lot of ncds in the unlisted space which are linked to project finance without credit rating yeah i think for unlisted bonds also credit rating is compulsory but of course you know it is more regulated in the listing space okay so you are saying that uh, there is not much that we can do about if there are unrated uh, unlisted yeah. bonds that are coming and people should take their own financial advisors uh, advice and then make investments in such because any which sebi is not regulating them exactly there is no regulation that is you know uh, upon them to actually you know get a credit rating done whereas in a listed instrument yes sebi is a watchdog and they are doing their bit of you know things to get them uh, properly you know or you know carving out various regulations for that so that you know Good. the ratings are done properly but as far as a public issue and a private placement is concerned uh, i think there is a timeline difference uh, of course uh, in a public issue whereas versus private placement private placements are for a shorter duration of time uh, public issues are for a larger duration of time private placement you know the issue opens or closes within a day or two that is the maximum the people keep it open but the public issue is open for a period of you know good 30 days roughly around 30 days so for a month or so for people to apply and you know uh, put in money so as far as the process is concerned process is more or less similar only the timelines are little different uh, in both the cases companies have to take an in principle approval pehle hi stock exchange ka approval lena padta hai before you can even you know uh, टेक मनी फ्रॉम दी इन्वेस्टर्स पैसा लेने से पहले आपको एक इन प्रिंसिपल अप्रूवल लेना पड़ता है दैट यस थिंग्स आर फाइन आपने कोई यू नो देयर इज नो प्रॉब्लम इन द सेंस कि यू नो एज़ अ डिस्क्लोजर्स आर कंसर्न देयर इज नो प्रॉब्लम एंड यू कैन गो अहेड एंड टेक द मनी फ्रॉम दी इन्वेस्टर्स यू नो बेस्ड ऑन द डिस्क्लोजर्स दैट यू हैव डिफाइंड यू फाइल द डॉक्यूमेंट्स यू टेक द मनी फ्रॉम दी इन्वेस्टर्स एंड देन यू फाइंड uh you know then you have the ebp setup done as harit told you that this is one of the you know uh important uh, step that india has taken or the regulator of india has taken of setting up ebp for a private placement the bidding happens the bidding is available uh you know to the public uh, here in the private placement ebp is a concept for private placement okay so here the informed set of investors uh, are there and they bid uh you know to ensure that there is a transparency in taking the money and you get a larger chunk of investors who are looking at the private placement jinhe dikhta hai ki aapka offer open hai and there's a larger chunk of investors which are available to uh, you know the companies to give money uh same way i think for the public issue also uh you open the issue the bidding process is available on the stock exchange you can see how many bids have come how many people have put in the money that is all available to the to the investors at large and uh, once the bidding is uh, uh, you know done uh, the company uh, you know approaches the stock exchange for final listing and trading approval where you know this is uh, you know same in both the cases the company will come they will approach the exchange for listing and trading approval and then the security get listed and it is available for trading at the stock exchange platform so whenever cumulatively a company is uh, planning to raise more than 100 crore 100 crores or above they have to make use of this evp platform so this is in one financial year if the next year they again go in then again the same yeah, application yeah okay again this is limited to one financial year. correct understood got it. okay can i move on to the next slide yeah please i think uh, one very important thing is that you know uh whenever a company wants to raise a fund i'm asking i'm saying it more from perspective of a company but yes uh all this whatever is going to happen or whenever whatever you know disclosures the company is going to give during the 
time or or its journey of listing i think that is all uh, available to the investors ye investors ke liye bahut khas kar important isliye hai kyunki unko pata hona chahiye ki company kya kya disclosure deta hai aur kaise kaise deta hai kya kya wo dhyan rakhta hai apne mein and kya kya company kya kya investors ko bhi dhyan rakhna chahiye okay so for a company importantly is when you are planning to get listed please plan well in advance that yes you are going to enter into a listing space there are going to be regulations you know kuch bolta na jaise hamare ghar mein bhi kuch ek regulations hote hain ki bas is samay tak hi aap ghar aa sakte ho aap yahi kar sakte ho there are certain you know few rules that we follow in even our at our home so same way you know hum jab ek listing space mein aate ho there are certain rules that we need to follow kyun kyunki discipline hona chahiye जैसे हमारे घर में हमारा डिसिप्लिन हम बरकरार रखते हैं वैसे ही हमें मार्केट में भी डिसिप्लिन बरकरार रखना है ताकि नो बडी सफर्स सो कंपनी शुड प्लान वेल इन एडवांस यू नो वेदर दे आर इक्विप्ड टू डू द पोस्ट इश्यू कंप्लायसेस हायर अ पर्सन यू नो हु विल बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इंश्योरिंग दैट दीज कंप्लायसेज आर डन यू नो इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट people understand or you know the companies understand that there is there are bunch of people who have invested so the second part comes in that the communication has to be very transparent you know from the company's end for investors to take a cautious call ki yes we have all the pieces of information and ha hum soch samajh ke isme invest kar rahe hain third aspect is the corporate governance is yes you know it is um, uh, emerging from point number 2 that yes importance of communications whether importance of communication what you are saying whether you are showing your results as proper following accounting standards whether your board is in compliance with what sebi wants you know constitution of various committees and everything after that you know point number 4 is uh, your ongoing dialogues with your holders you know what you say is like a communication jo bhi aap stock exchange pe bolte ho ya you know uh, upload karte ho it is like a you know communication which is sent to the investors right more so you know after your results you can you have a meeting with them you can disclose your results so you know this is like an open dialogue with your holders they know what you are going through and uh, what are you you know uh, what is the company up to uh another important aspect is disclosure of price sensitive information though lesser impact on the bond market but yes companies which are equity listed as well as bond listed here the more you know the role of this price sensitive information becomes more but yes the companies or the investors uh, should make note of that that every price sensitive information that is uploaded by the company uh they should know what is the information you know suggesting where you know the company is going so for the companies please disclose all the information that is available which is you know price sensitive in nature do not hide anything you know uh, it is important that you know hum logo ne bachpan mein ek aisa sikha tha ki doctor aur uh, uh, lawyer se kuch chupana nahi chahiye to usme jab listed company hoti hai to usme ek aur addition ho jana chahiye ki stock exchange se bhi kuch nahi chupana chahiye kyunki jaise hi rumors aate hain jaise hi reports aate hain stock exchange ki flagging ho jati hai कि भई आप बताइए कि ऐसा क्यों हुआ था तो इट इज ऑलवेज इम्पोर्टेंट कि आप जो भी है वो बताएं जस्ट टू गिव सम पर्सपेक्टिव जो रेगुलेशंस है जो कंप्लायंस एक लिस्टेड एनसीडी के लिए होते हैं इसको चार भाग में हमने डिवाइड किया है जैसे कि रूपल ने बताया कि इंफॉर्मेशन डिस्क्लोजर्स विच इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लाइक हर इज गिवन एग्जाम्पल फॉर एवरी पेरेंट it is very very important to know how his child is performing hence there are every quarterly exams or there are preliminary exams so that there are no surprises so har ek information jaise ke ek financial results publish kiya jata hai 45 days uh, before uh, 45 days from the quarter jahan pe aapka debt service coverage ratio debt equity interest coverage ratio capital kaisa hai net worth kaisa hai profitability kya hai is type ke sab details diye jate hain so that uh, every investor knows एक्सचेंज में ये इन्फॉर्मेशन दिया गया है एंड यू आर ऑथराइज टू व्यू दिस फ्रीली एंड नो दैट व्हाट हाउ अ कंपनी इज परफॉर्मिंग स्पेशली इन द बॉन्ड दैट यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड ऑफ दैट कंपनी राइट डू यू फील हरित इज देयर एनी पॉइंट दैट आई मिस्ड आउट सो प्लीज फील फ्री टू ऐड ऑन नो सनी यू हैव नॉट मिस्ड आउट एनीथिंग बिल्कुल करेक्ट आपने स्टार्ट किया हमने 
फॉर फॉर अ वाइडर ऑडियंस टू अंडरस्टैंड और पब्लिक एट लार्ज को समझने के लिए चार बकेट्स में डिवाइड कर दिया कि ये जो एलओ डी आर रिक्वायरमेंट है ये होते क्या है इसको आप कैसे समझ सकते हैं इसको आप कैसे इवेल्युएट कर सकते हैं और बेसिक फॉर्मेट में इजी समझने के हिसाब से कैसे कर सकते हैं जैसे पहला था आपका इंफॉर्मेशन डिस्क्लोजर जो एक एंटिटी को डिस्क्लोज करना है दूसरा होता है सेफ्टी एंड सिक्योरिटी डिस्क्लोजर यानी आपको सनी डोंट चेंज स्लाइड आई जस्ट गिविंग बकेट का इंस्ट्रक्शन थर्ड इज इंटरेस्ट एंड रिडम्शन का डिस्क्लोजर एंड फोर्थ इज कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस का डिस्क्लोजर तो ये डिस्क्लोजर आपको देने होते हैं हमने बकेट्स में कर दिया ताकि इन आपको ज्यादा इजी में समझ में आए कि इसको कैसे पढ़ते हैं आप सर ने बिल्कुल करेक्ट मैंशन किया सम इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट आपको दिखाने पड़ते हैं वेन इट कम्स टू फाइनेंशियल डिस्कलोजर्स या इन्फॉर्मेशन डिस्कलोजर्स एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन विच इज वेरी प्राइस सेंसिटिव फ्रॉम द कंपनीज परसपेक्टिव विच इज विच मे इफेक्ट पेमेंट शेड्यूल उसका इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट का शेड्यूल या कोई रिडम्शन शेड्यूल को फॉलो करने के लिए कंपनी की बैलेंस शीट क्या है परफॉर्मेंस क्या है रूपल वॉज क्लियरली एक्सप्लेनिंग हाउ एफिशियंट इट इज रिक्वायर्ड मतलब मैं अपने अगेन वही एग्जाम्पल में जाऊं तो इफ आई एम गेटिंग अ टेस्ट रिपोर्ट एवरी क्वार्टर और एवरी मंथ फ्रॉम फॉर माई सन मुझे मालूम है कि उसके मैथ्स में ग्रेड्स अच्छे आ रहे हैं कि इंग्लिश में कम आ रहे हैं कि मुझे क्या करेक्टिव एक्शन लेना है एंड आई कैन डू इट वो मेरे लिए चाहिए ये इन्फॉर्मेशन डिस्कलोजर है विच ऑन दी अदर हैंड प्रॉब्ली अनलिस्टेड स्पेस है या मेरा बच्चा स्कूल नहीं जा रहा है सिर्फ ओपन एग्जाम दे रहा है या कंस्पॉन्डेंस कोर्स कर रहा है तो शायद मुझे नहीं मालूम चलेगा वो एग्जामिनेशन कर सकता है Second is safety and security disclosures. So when when a company is saying that I am issuing a secured bond, so what security cover kya hai? Or uski authenticity kya hai? Whether you are saying the security is hundred percent covered hai, it is more than hundred percent covered. Whatever is mentioned in the uh, offer document, ya I M A jo apne mention kiya tha, wo hai ki nahi hai? Wo at all times of the life of the bond. it is there or not so that has to be maintained which is a part of the uh, information which has to be shared to the regulate uh, to the exchanges and its various frequencies hain matlab wo aapko periodicity dena hai quarterly half yearly annual dena hai same is the case uh, issuer is saying that this is my security cover but usko authenticate kon karega so there is a security cover certificate which is done by auditors ki this is ha bhai whatever is communicated it is there ठीक है ड्यू डेलिजेंस सर्टिफिकेट्स है इफ देर इज अ स्टेटमेंट ऑफ वैल्यू ऑफ प्लेज सिक्योरिटीज मतलब विच एवर डिसरा अकाउंट क्रिएट किया हुआ है तो उसमें फंड अवेलेबल है कि नहीं है देर हैज टू बी सम काइंड ऑफ वैलिडेशन टू दिस विच इज डन बाय द इश्यूर द ओनर्स इज ऑन द इश्यूर एंड हीज टू फॉलो एज पर द रेगुलेटरी गाइडलाइन एंड ऑन वेरियस फ्रीक्वेंसी हैज टू अपडेट द एक्सचेंज इंटरेस्ट पॉइंट ऑल्सो यू ऑलरेडी सेट दैट इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट फ्रीक्वेंसीज वगैरह कैसे किया जाता है वो इनको कंपलसरी एक्सचेंजेस को इन्फॉर्म करना रहता है रूपल ऑल्सो क्लियरली एक्सप्लेन सो विल नॉट स्पेंड टू मच टाइम ऑन दिस बिकॉज लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर वेटिंग फॉर आर क्यू एन ए द लास्ट बकेट इज द कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस एनी क्रेडिट रेटिंग लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन कि अगर किसी का क्रेडिट रेटिंग गिरता है नीचे जाता है या रिस्क बढ़ता है इट इज कंपलसरी अंडर लिस्टेड बॉन्ड्स फॉर देम टू इन्फॉर्म द एक्सचेंज दैट दिस इज व्हाट इज हैपेंड एंड कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस का सर्टिफिकेट देना पड़ता है उन्हें प्लस अगर कोई इन्वेस्टर कंप्लेन्स होता है सो देन दैट आल्सो दे नीड टू डिस्क्लोज एंड वेरियस इट कम्स अंडर वेरियस रेगुलेशन सो वी नॉट ट्राई टू कवर ऑल ऑफ देम बट जितना हम कवर कर सकते थे सैंपल के तौर पर हमने वो सब क्रिटिकल यहाँ पे एड किया है कि रिस्क दैट आर ऑलवेज अटैच जिस वॉन्टेड टू डिस्कलोज दिस that there are always attached like any other asset class equity ho debt ho real estate ho debt mein bhi risks hote hain liquidity risk fraud risk market risk and credit risk which is for every financial asset class which will always be there